In the 1977, we started organ transplantation clinical trial. It's used uh, on the inmate and the, and the, the death row sentence and the inmate organs. Organ transplants save countless lives, but in addition to the technical challenges, there are social and moral issues. All over the world, the issues are similar. Because demand for organs far exceeds their supply, waiting lists are very long. So who gets priority? What is the source of the organs? How are organs donated? And what happens when a black market develops? But in China, there has been another issue. Because organ donation has seemed to be inconsistent with traditional Chinese culture, organs have been sourced from executed prisoners. This unethical practice, seen as a necessity to save lives, has caused great controversy and elicited great criticism. Even though lives were being saved, the charge was that human rights were being abused. One doctor made all the difference. His story is riveting. I speak with him to get closer to China. Yan Shiyi, a nine-year-old, has suffered from kidney disease for most of her life. For six years, Yan has to do kidney dialysis every three hours. Though dialysis can maintain Yan's life, a kidney transplant is the only way for her to escape the misery. In fact, Yan Shiyi has been on an organ transplant waiting list for more than four years. She's one of the 25,000 registered patients waiting for organ transplants. And that's only a tip of the iceberg. It's estimated that about 300,000 patients need transplants. But only about 10,000 operations are performed per year. A temporary solution was to use organs from executed prisoners. Our problem, major problem, is the leakage of a national organ civilian donation systems called the Achilles heel of the Chinese organ transplantation systems. Now, we, in the 1977, we started organ transplantation clinical trial. It's used uh, and the inmate and the, and the the death row sentence and the inmate organs until the years of 2009. How, how did the use of uh, executed uh, uh, prisoners' organs begin? What was the... Actually, this, you know, like the sum of the area and all the countries in the world, just like Taiwan, also some, some part of the world, including U.S., Initially, and the clinical trial, and the majority of the countries, <laughs> and, the, and doctors, surgeons, request to use the organ from the, and the inmates' organs for clinical trial. However, majority of the countries and the regions, including Taiwan, as long as the civilian organ donation system established, and then eradicated the usage of the uh, executed prisoners' organs. How did that system work, as specific as you, as you feel Actually, comfortable they, with? Actually, this is not the, from country level. Right. As it's local level. Right. And the surgeons in the certain hospitals contact the local court, uh, judicial and the officials. And they got the rights to uh, harvest the organ and allocate the organs. I observed once and in the 1993, because the organ transplantation is divided into two groups. One is a donor and not recipient. So I just feel curious. I went to this to observe how they got the organ from the donor team. So then I see the, the feel and the, I feel sick. 
So I make my mind, I want to change. Right. And, and economically, what, what, what were the going rates? I mean, how, how, how much money was, uh, could, this, uh, could this be on an organ basis? Uh, Actually, according to the guiding principle of WHO, the organ should be and, uh, free. You know, it's donation. Right, sure, sure. Uh, it's not, uh, cannot uh, pay. Uh, right. However, there's a, it's some brokers, some we call the black market. So I can not tell you the exactly the <laughs> how much the money, but it's, uh, it, it, you know, it's shameful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that creates interest groups. Yes. On the local level, yes. whomever, and how yes. they how they do that. Yes. Um, and, and that's why what what seemed to have been solved several times was kept coming back or very difficult to change. Uh, actually, and the transition from the executed prisoners organ to community based organ donation is the dream for the transplant surgeons in China. Because actually the surgeons, doctors, actually are in dilemma. One hand, they should save the life, thousands of the patients dying of organ failure. On the other hand, there's no leakage of organ donation in the, our countries. So this just put the doctors in the very embarrassed and trapped in and the uh, uh, recirculations. Uh, very, very, very difficult situation. So if you, you believe that the prisoners could donate the donor organ in this circumstance without cohesion? It's for the government to make the, the rules and regulations, and so we all would have concerns, right? But I'm confident it's going to be done. There are thousands of people in China who need transplantation to save their life and this won't have we have a citizen-based organ donation and uh, they, this cannot occur if you're using organs from executed prisoners. Well, it's a good news for us as representing the WHO. That's something that we were expecting for years uh, to be able to this big country and with a, a great potential to move in the ethical uh, way and respecting WHO guiding principles on transplantation. And now we're they're ready to do so and I really congratulate China for doing it that way. Organ donations mostly come from two sources, deceased and living donations. Living donations take place between a living donor and a recipient. Deceased donors are those who have passed away recently. People in China consider the body a heritage from their parents and want to keep the body intact even after death. By tradition and culture, Chinese are not predisposed to donate their organs after death. In China, about one-third of donated organs are from living donations, mostly from one family member to another. The rest are from deceased donors. According to Minister Huang, deceased donors mostly come from executed prisoners prior to 2009. That's about 65 percent of all organ sources. And uh, some of the official always say oh, this uh, obstacle for organ donation is uh, traditional culture, yeah. Confucius, right. because they uh, say uh, keep the intact yeah. of the body after death. Yeah. But uh, you know, for every culture, just like a coin, you two, two sides. <laughs> also, the Confucius say it's a benevolence. A seeming alive is better than building seven-story pagoda. <laughs> oh, there's only many messy right, and the right. save the people's life. So actually, through the process of the organ donation, um, practically we already see the virtues of a traditional Chinese culture is shining in the, our the process of organ donation. In 2005, Dr. Huang Jiefu was selected chairman of the World Health Organization's Western Pacific Regional Meeting. And he made an announcement that shook the world. 
2005 was a, uh, an axial year when you, um, at a, a WHO meeting, I think, in the Philippines, uh, uh, talked about uh, organs from executed prisoners, and shall we say that was, uh, that was not uh, the official policy of the government at, at that time. Um, uh, tell me a little bit about that circumstance, uh, wh what happened, why you did what you did, and uh, what the consequences were. Yeah, as a matter of fact, at that time I was selected as a chairman and, to, and uh, chair the meeting for Western Pacific region, for WHO. I was chosen as a chairman probably and there were 45 countries yeah. and representatives and uh, select the Jeffrey as a chairman and to say how can you say and uh, your, your organ transplant because this, uh, the focus is the uh, organ uh, transplant is uh, the um, national health authority and see how Jeffrey and the response to the questions. The questions were direct. Dr. Huang faced them right on. So I get the question from the uh, some the you know uh, countries representatives so there's a where's the organ come from so as a surgeon so I cannot s lie I can tell the truth uh, because at that time still has some the accusation uh, from the some the uh, we call the uh, some the part and the falling and the force uh, so and then I told them and uh, in China disease organ at the in, in the 19, I mean the 2005, all come from the executed prisoners. The announcement made Dr. Huan Jiefu the first government official to admit that China used organs from executed prisoners. The consequence <laughs> is very, very funny. And when I returned to China, some of my colleagues and, uh, told me, Jeffrey, and you, you made big trouble and uh, you will be <laughs> removed <laughs> from your post as a vice minister for health. However, I'm, I'm, I was very confident because I tell the truth. Also, it's the policy of the, our high leadership. If we go back to prior to 2005 when you made your historic announcement at the uh, uh, WHO, um, it was occasionally coming up that uh, foreign countries, different people would uh, ask uh, ch certain Chinese officials about the rumors about using executed prisoners' organs and in almost every case, maybe every case, mm -hmm. the Chinese officials representing the government would say it's, it's, none of that's true. Um, uh, didn't that create a, a, a problem for, for those officials who said it wasn't true, and now you as min <laughs> Vice Minister of Health said it was true. Harvesting organ from the executed prisoners is a request from the medical and the sectors. It's not a national policy, because the doctor w want to save the life yeah. of some patients and request to some local call and go get the organs. It's not a national policy. We have never got a legislation uh, to permit to use the organ from the executed the prisoners in China. Last March at the, um, the National Congress, as the so-called two sessions met, uh, y you, you made an announcement at that point which uh, uh, surprised some people. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Actually, I'm the member. I'm a standing member of the CPPCC. So initially, I, I didn't and uh, think I, I could be and uh, make a, make an announcement in the press conference <laughs> because I'm the member. So then I was choose as a, a person to make an announcement in the press conference. 
I am with European Times headquartered in France. Why did China decide to stop using executed prisoners as a source of organ transplants, and will that cause a shortage of organs needed in transplants? Can you share with us more information on the current status of voluntary donation of organs from Chinese citizens? So I mandated by the CPPCC also make an official announcement. Now this is the national policy. It's a governmental policy. But at that point, um, some of your colleagues, perhaps, uh, and some of the ministries are relevant, to, didn't know that. As long as the high leadership make, make the decision, and then everything will go forward without the, you know, the notification of the, some the inferior and the sectors. <laughs> so basically what, what you did is participate in a process that often works in China where leadership is supportive, but there's a whole bureaucratic system that is hard to move just right. because of any bureaucracy, right, not right. just China, any but bureaucracy. But it's recent. There, if you just uh, inform the Minister of Health and then some interest group, you know, make the things um, become very ridiculous. <laughs> right, and, and, and interest groups have a way of not just confronting it, but just yeah, delaying it. Uh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Because they wouldn't right, want a direct right. confrontation, but they say yeah. it has to be studied, or we need a report, or we need something, and hopefully that'll just go on and on, no, nothing ever happened. They, they will, will say, oh, there's a gap. You, you will just uh, and, uh, stop You forgot the, to do something. Uh, you, no, the, 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 quite the reason, and, and they probably say, we cannot do that because of the demand of the people. There's oh. thousands of patients yeah. dying of organ failure, right. need the organ transplant. So we could not establish an organ donation system in China in short time. Uh -huh. So right. there's a reason. Right, a good reason. A yeah, good reason. Yeah. Uh, this is for people. Right. In 1984, China enacted the rules concerning the utilization of corpses or organs from corpses of executed prisoners. The rule provided that corpses or organs of executed prisoners could be utilized if no one claimed the body, if the executed prisoner volunteered to have his corpses so used, or if the family consented. In 2007, the Chinese government issued its first regulation on human organ transplants. The regulation stipulates that human organ transplants should respect the principle of voluntary and free donation and makes it a crime to harvest organs without the owner's permission or against his will. Yet the 1984 rules and the 2007 regulations did not stop the misuse of executed prisoners' organs once and for all. They always say how we cannot use the prisoners' organs is great waste. Uh, now the prisoners are willing to do it. Why don't we don't use? Yeah. Actually, it's actually it's a lie. So you, you, you believe and the uh, prisoners could donate, donate the organ in this circumstance without coercion? Yeah. <laughs> also, if the people know his organs and the uh, donation organs is mixed with the prisoners' organs, then nobody wants to donate. Wow. So I cited, or just to show you my book, I cited the uh, remarks of the former American President Lincoln. So a house divided against itself cannot stand. So in China, for the whole world, and you, you cannot coexist, and the, I mean the, and the organ from the prisoners and the organ from the civilians cannot coexist. I think the progress of organ transplantations indicate directly in which Chinese society is moving. You know, this is a good time to, uh, to reflect on your, your, your entire life uh, as a doctor. Uh, let's go back uh, to when you were growing up and wanted to be a doctor, went to medical school, and remember you 
told me that uh, you had the remarkable experience of being a doctor and a coal miner, or an iron miner at the same time, or time during the uh, uh, Cultural Revolution. So uh, tell me a little bit of, of your life story. <laughs> Actually, when I was in my teenagers, my father died of the acute fulminant hepatitis B. So following my father's uh, last wish, I chose the medicine as my career. So through the entrance examination, I entered to the Zhongshan Medical College and afterwards named after Xinxian University of Medical Sciences. I remember when we, uh, when we talked that uh, you said when you were invited to be vice minister, this wasn't particularly exciting to you because you just loved being a surgeon. Right. And, and this, right, right. You were not trying to be a minister or anything. That was not your goal. You know, this, uh, at that time, I see, so I still saw, so I should follow my father's last wish uh, to work as a doctor, good doctor for people. It's not official because my father never, never and the dream I would become the official. Yeah. <laughs> so initially I was very reluctant to accept the, and, you know, the appointment as a vice minister. And then I request, I, I, I see the risk. However, our, our, our government, our leadership is very open-minded. So, okay, uh, uh, Jeffrey, you still can keep your identities as a surgeon. You move your license from the Guangzhou to Beijing in the PUMC yeah, and the hospitals. You're working as a surgeon, uh, visually in the liver transplants as well as liver surgery. To this day, Dr. Huang works as a surgeon at Peking Union Medical College Hospital. How could you then confront and, and win this battle with all of these entrenched interests that are extremely powerful? How does that work, especially in a, in, in, in a, in a society in China that uh, political kinds of things are done behind closed doors? That's why I think that China is, uh, and uh, the future will, will be bright were promising the countries. You know, we, just you mentioned, already I retired uh, from the Ministry of Health. <laughs> it's not actually, it's not officials. However, we got some the moral blessing from the public, from the mass. Also got a strong support uh, from the, our top leaders. They want big determination, want and to carry out the open door policy and reform, also call for the rejuvenation of great relations. Now that we are lucky, we are in a good time <laughs> for, for, for duties. Uh, uh, Robert, probably you, you don't know, the, the top 10 event in the health in the 2014. So my announcement oh. become the top one. Oh wow! Oh, oh. It's over uh, the 100,000 yeah. voters. Yes. Oh. Also got many many messages from the young surgeons, transplant surgeons. Mm -hmm. They say, Jeffrey, you did the right things. Mm -hmm. You did the right thing for us. You did the right thing for our future. It makes their whole life honorable as yeah. opposed to right. dealing with things that are. Uh, yeah. are immoral and, and very suspect. You also got many messages and many greetings from the many catches, high rankings officials. Sure. Yeah. Well, what you've done is really the best example, in my opinion, the best exemplification of, uh, of Chinese reform, of Chinese anti-corruption, of the vision of President Xi and leadership today to really transform China. Um, you know, people see it in terms of state-owned enterprises or, or uh, uh, you know, broad social things. I mean, it, it sometimes seems abstract and uncertain. But when you focus it on organ transplants and the, uh, the dramatic reform and transformation that you've done, you can really see how it affects people's lives. And it's a question of, of national morality and, and uh, really uh, a, a, a tremendous breakthrough. Um, and so do you see the uh, transformation in organ transplants as reflecting this broader s social development of China? Yes. 
yes, uh, on the scale yeah. of morality and civilization. Yes, yes, it is. Actually, I, I think the progress of organ transplantations indicate direction in which Chinese society is moving uh, at the present. As you know, and uh, our president Xi Jinping called for the Chinese dream is a rejuvenation of great Chinese nation. Yeah. I think that he means it's not just the pure GDP, yeah. uh, that means the civilization. Uh, I think so China's and the rejuvenation and the great nation definitely the organ should come from the community-based organ donation. <laughs> Many countries used organs from executed prisoners during initial stages of their transplantation development, but this unsavory practice was eventually abandoned. It is now in China against the law. It is illegal to use organs of executed prisoners for transplants. It is hard to overstate the significance of this absolute prohibition for China's commitment to health care reform and for the country's affirmation of human rights. In the future, when the long annals of China's history of reform are compiled, I predict that one of its greatest successes will be China's decision to stop using organs from executed prisoners for transplants. This is also a story for the ages, where one decent man with little resources other than his reputation as a doctor and his rectitude as a human being, could stand against powerful, multi-pronged, entrenched interest groups. Persisting for a decade, this decent man, Dr. Huang Jiafu, finally, with support from the top, won the battle for human dignity, upholding the highest ideals of Chinese civilization. To me, no other story is closer.